there's an inequity also in uh, the the therapeutic industry. Like most therapists are women, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So oftentimes it just ends up being reg- and mm-hmm. <laughs> the it's thing too fun. is. We assume doctors are healthy, but sometimes doctors are some of the most unhealthy people. Oh, yeah. Same with therapists. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So very yeah. often, yeah. your therapist, your female it therapist it might flip. be worse and be more broken. Yeah, and might be, be more toxic than you. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and you now regurgitating toxicity. Yep. Oh. Yeah, she's going to be your friend and your therapist at the, at the couple of sessions. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and instead of actually problem solving, and I think also part of women's nature, y'all are more like... Y'all aren't as regimented as men. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all are more, I want the catharsis. I want to talk it through. Mm-hmm. Right. But as far as I need a plan and this is how I'm right. going to execute it, that's not necessarily y'all's strong suit. I'm not saying all of you guys, but with that being said, with the overabundance of therapists mm-hmm. that are black women, and then the, over, the popularity mm-hmm. of black women seeking therapy, y'all just in the office kicking it. Y'all ain't really getting no How work done. I was gonna say not because, because did <laughs> you see now. did you see the therapist who went uh, viral? I think it was last year. She was saying that she no longer wants to take on a black male client. It's yeah, been two of them. I remember actually. that. Oh, no, mm. I don't know. It's, it's been two that. of them. One of them, she, she, got, was, she, she was twerking, shaking her ass, and all kinds of stuff. And like black men ain't this and that. that. And then another one, she was saying that she's tired of working with black men. And then they took her off one of the black male therapy sites, and she got mad. Mm. So like. The level of immaturity that we're seeing. I'm asking myself, yo, who gave you a therapy license? Right. Mm-hmm. Somebody say, You're not even mature. Right. 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 So, mm-hmm. so with that being said, I think that's part of the reason men are so unenthusiastic about going to therapy. Because it's like, that's mm-hmm. what I'm going to run into. Mm-hmm. Another woman saying that I'm the problem. Mm-hmm. With no context or consideration yeah. in my life. Mm-hmm. Well, I had a situation say, recently mm-hmm. where it was like, Is she I, really I was hearing telling me when early. I'm in that session? Yeah, I was telling y'all earlier when you would miss it, but mm-hmm. one of my Longtime guy friends hit me with some therapy speak about a situation that made no sense. And it had been months since we had talked and all this stuff. And it's just like, don't, don't therapy, don't therapize me. That's mm-hmm. what I'm going to call it. Mm-hmm. Y'all know like to make up words. Therapize. Don't, no, that's don't, a word. Therapize. Don't therapize. That's, that's a word. word. Oh, okay. It is. All right. Well, come yeah, on, come on. Come on, come on now. <laughs> don't therapize me. Because, spirit. <laughs> yeah. You can get right mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Don't do that because out of saying all this, I'm trying to work on myself. And in my, in my healing journey and all this I've done for me, you're saying, I, I, mm. I, I. And then you're still not taking yep. accept that accountability. You're not understanding another perspective or side. So I think it's trickling over into the men, too, because this was a man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Uh-huh. Because we're not, because again, we're, we're at a place where everybody's, like, it's sensationalized. So everybody's mm-hmm. doing it, mm-hmm. but we're not doing it properly. There's, yeah, a, there's a term called internal locus of control and then external locus of control. Mm-hmm. And basically internal is you take responsibility for your world, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Whereas external is it's everything and everyone's fault but mine. Yes. Yeah. I think what pop therapy has created amongst men and women mm-hmm. is this idea that I am the prevalent victim. Mm-hmm. Mm. And now I have the vocabulary to twist and articulate how I'm the victim, Mm -hmm. (laughs) as opposed to the part that I played. So even in Will Smith's situation, Mm -hmm. to bring it back to that, I don't feel bad for the nigga. Mm-mm. No, I, I don't. Think, no, you I stayed don't. with her, and you knew you she was, it. and you, you, a you lot of men, more to better than anybody. And I've been talking is. about this during my case studies. A lot of men, unfortunately, are sadomasochistic. They mm-hmm. seek out. The worst, most terrible women that they can seek out. You know those women who say, "Oh, I don't have a bad attitude. You can't handle me." Mm-hmm. Or, the, the, or the dudes who say, "Oh, she gay? Oh no, she not gay. Wait till she she gets somebody." We seek out because y'all tell my nerd stop DMing me talking about you can change my mind because you cannot. We mm-hmm. seek, All right. we seek <laughs> out challenges Damn. and then we want empathy for when it goes wrong mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because a lot of times these. To your point, mm-hmm. you can see these red flags from a mile away, but yeah. you think it's Six Flags. Yeah, you think it's, it's, it's fun. It's yeah, a it's a circus. Mm-hmm. Same with women, mm-hmm. but again, men do this too, and I think part of it is this popularizing. Oh, we getting therapy and this, this, and that, mm-hmm. and nobody's calling it out. Yeah, that whole thing uh, about so I'm protecting my peace, a, but uh, a lot of people, it's not taking accountability. It is a such thing as protecting your right. peace, but mm-hmm. cutting everybody off that has a disagreement with you it's not yeah. because you're not taking accountability because after you cut off four or five people, there's a common denominator. Come oh, yeah. You. Come on. Right. So sure. therefore, you're not protecting your peace. You are dodging accountability. Yeah. So whereas if you have that conversation is, yeah, you were wrong. Yeah, you 
you the one that did it. It was not us. Mm. It was you. But a lot of people go around, I'm protecting my peace. Mm. And you cutting off 10 and 15 people. If you changing circles every year, mm. you're, the you're the problem. It's you the problem. It's you, baby. So you're mm. not protecting your peace. You're mm. dodging accountability. And you yeah. can look at a person's life to see who's elevated and who hasn't. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when you're doing the work, you un- you're already going to see it. I mean, it's, it's pretty true. evident. It's clear. So when when you, that's how I evaluate people, friends, the same mm-hmm. way. So if anyone's in my circle, if I see you elevating, I know you're doing the work. Mm-hmm. If yeah. I see you talking, I know you're just talking. Yeah. It's just two different things. So you can talk, Where's you can talk fruit? a good game, as they would say. Mm-hmm. The fruit? But if you are really into uh, your self-growth and development, you're going to be mindful of what you're around, what you interact with. So that those things don't continue to bring trauma to you because mm-hmm. you're already trying to alleviate the trauma anyway that you experienced by growing up and whatever, you know. So you're, you know, like me, I'm constantly erasing things as fast as I possibly can. So in my mind, if I'm having a conversation, I might not remember what you said to me because it ain't valuable. Right. Mm. But then I get to say, you ain't, you ain't heard nothing I said. Mm. I heard everything you said just wasn't valuable enough for me to hold on to it. Mm. And we, I, I, I'll go ahead. You're ahead. But I truly believe, too. We attract what we are, whether exactly. you want to be accountable for that or not, men and women. Mm-hmm. So if you're attracting the same type of man or the same type of woman, what is it in you mm-hmm. that is attracting them or bringing them towards you? Right. You have to be accountable and say, okay, exactly. what do I have to fix? What am I mm-hmm. putting right. out here on social right. media right. that's got my DM jumping exactly. and going to Netflix and chill? What am mm-hmm. I putting right. out here but then that makes her want to mm-hmm. you know, come and run through my money? Am I putting out here my mm-hmm. stacks? Am I putting out right. here my exactly. profession? If I'm a... a if I'm a basketball player or a truck driver mm-hmm. or somebody that we know make a lot of, I work at BMW and you like this all day. Mm-hmm. We know what type of money BMW yeah, does, exactly. right? So if you got women trying to take advantage of you, what are you putting out there? What are you putting mm. out there? You lead, see, most men you're like leading to lead with, with that. Lead, yeah. lead with their finances. Women, you're leading you know? with right. yeah. certain type of pictures, yeah. certain type of outfit, certain type of verbiage. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If you're leading with that, then if you throw the bait, then you're going to get the fish. So you right. said that, yeah, I mean, you said a mouthful early, you know, out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth, the mouth speaks. speaks. So what's really in you? You can't, you can't, con- yeah. 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 yeah, you can't control that. If, if, if it's in you, that's what's coming out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, no. And what are you, what kind of fruit are you putting out? Right. Exactly. As well as you said, what's your productivity look like? Fruit? If you're doing the work and you in therapy, but I see you on here throwing shade on Facebook and being toxic, mm. the therapy ain't working, baby. Because why are you doing? I, I guess I'm a, I don't want to stop y'all. Yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. But at the same time, what's the grace period on healing? Like how long? It's a lifelong journey. It's, it a, is, it's always right? healing because so you're always experiencing long trauma. Will it take for somebody to get the accountability part of it if they're just starting their their healing journey? Mm. You know, like it, it would be up to the people, uh, up to the person to discern whether they want to continue to be in this person's life who mm-hmm. is still fresh or early in their healing stages. You get what I'm saying? So, we you know we're talking about people who you go to therapy, which you're doing this, but like. It takes time. And sometimes it's certain things that have to happen or certain conversations or things that need to come up for them to know, okay, I do need to accept accountability. So I'm I'm just thinking like, well, how long have this person been in, in therapy for you to feel like, oh, you, you the therapy ain't working for you? You get what I'm saying? I'm not well, going to say... I feel, no. Oh, sorry. But <laughs> well, I feel like to really go to therapy to do the work and to heal or to accept healing, you have to take accountability. Mm -hmm. That say that there's brokenness, that there's a trauma. So you do have some level of accountability. I think I'm speaking to the people that he said are just going to therapy to have my badge. Mm -hmm. And so I've been to six sessions, but there is no fruit. There is no elevation. There is no growth. So it's really not a grace period because we're always experiencing trauma. Mm -hmm. Right. All of our life we're experiencing, but I think it takes a certain level of accountability to say, I really want to heal. Not I'm going on the therapy so I can check it off the list and, and I'm say, okay. do the work I'm, be, I'm my best version of me but we don't see the best version yeah, of you not gotcha. even a, so I think that's in my opinion though mm-hmm. that's a, it's a certain level of accountability to say I need to heal because I know when I figured that out at 39 mm-hmm. I was like it was me this whole time yeah. right. and it's, this it's whole honestly, time <laughs> it's honestly immediate if you want to be if you want to be real about it when you start your heal, like I said, call it what you want, a healing mm-hmm. journey, therapy, mm-hmm. whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. When you start working on taking accountability with yourself and mm-hmm. understanding that sometimes you're the problem, mm-hmm. there's a it, it clicks. So it does. Everything it does. else that you do, you're intentional about mm-hmm. ensuring that you're not the problem. Right. And in those times where you are the problem, whether it be intentional or unintentional, mm-hmm. you, you still take apologize. accountability yep. for it. You you do what is necessary in those moments mm-hmm. so that you don't continue down that vicious cycle that got you where you were before 
you are on the other side of your healing. Right. And honestly, mm. truly, I feel like it's cool to know mm. that you're working on you and your healing. But the highest compliment you can receive is someone who's working on being a better version of you daily is for the people around you to see it. To see right. it. And not only to see it, but to express it to you. True. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, you know me in a lot of phases of my life. Yes, God. I, I have not always been this person. No. But for, <laughs> I've not always been who she is Woo! sitting here. Mm-hmm. But for my friends, when, when, and when things from people I think are my friends impact mm-hmm. me so heavily, for my friends that I have that have known me through these phases, mm-hmm. speak that life back into me and let me know you're not her anymore. You don't right. have you don't mm-hmm. have to feel this way because that's not who you are. Right. Mm-hmm. Then you know you're making it. Mm-hmm. That, I guess that's the confirmation you mm-hmm. want. But honestly, truly, when it comes but, to your you healing, it's, it's, it's it's going to be immediate because immediate. You do, to truly work on you and being a better version of yourself daily That's by true. taking accountability, being, you know, healed or whatever, it is an immediate thing. You're not going to be perfect at it, but it's immediate. Right. It's immediate. Wonder, what, uh, go ahead, Alan. No, go make your point. Make your point. Um, if I'm sitting back, as I'm sitting here thinking about accountability, it's very interesting that we're having this conversation because it's so powerful. Right? Mm-hmm. Accountability is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Like, it'll take you from a state of ignorance to a state of awareness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as I'm, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, culturally, mm-hmm. the foundation, since we were kids, we were taught not to be accountable. Mm. Mm. So now when I think about this, what's the first story that anybody, just give me, I'm going to ask anybody at the table, what's the first story of unaccountability that you can remember that was told to you? Uh, the Bible? Let's go mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll go there. Oh, Let's go there. No, no, no. I just, I just, I just want to tap in. I just want to, I just, I just want to tap in one second. But, but the, the story of Adam and Eve. Okay. Yeah. That accountability it. stretches across the planet mm-hmm. because who didn't take accountability? Eve. Right. Mm-hmm. So that accountability, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, how that stretches across the planet for us not to acknowledge accountability. Right. As people, we don't know to acknowledge accountability. We don't know how to say it's just I did it. It's my fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody else shouldn't suffer because I did that, right? Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is, if we've been raising kids and we've be cre- created a culture of normality of not taking accountability, and then we get with people in relationships, how do we transition that that's so baked in? You got people that's 40, 50, 70, 80, right? Mm-hmm. Into that phase of still not accepting accountability. Kurt Franklin mama. Yeah. Girl, I want to miss yeah, that's deep. Right there, that Kurt, yeah. Franklin, Mama. Yeah. You know, and, and I want to make I want to make a yeah. distinction because mm-hmm. I think what I'm seeing happen is, yeah, I did it, and what? Mm-hmm. And that's and that's awesome. being framed that's awesome. as that's accountability, yeah. as opposed mm-hmm. to, yes, I did it. I am remorseful mm-hmm. that I did it. How can I fix it? How can I fix it? Or I'm ready to face the consequences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think. You know, going back to mm. something you said earlier about, you know, once I heal, then I think part of that mm. accountability is understanding that it might mean that what, what you might have qualified for mm. before no your do. healing, mm-hmm. you, no longer do. you no longer do after your healing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I think re- amongst women mm-hmm. as well, that's a very, very tough pill to swallow, yeah. right? It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I turned you down in high school before you were a millionaire. Mm-hmm. But now that you're a millionaire, you're mm-hmm. successful, and I'm not the same high school girl, I, I'm still deserving of you, which, mm-hmm. is not, which is not accountability inherently because you're expecting him to evaluate you mm-hmm. the same way he did all those years ago. Mm-hmm. And you're expecting that he evaluates himself the same way he He was valued all those years Mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. So accountability, I think, is really humility. Mm -hmm. That's that's at the core of healing. It's humility. And that's my issue with this whole therapy movement because it's not encouraging humility. Mm -hmm. Humility. It's just uh, encouraging being able to identify Mm -hmm. and articulate problems Mm -hmm. in everybody else. Mm -hmm. They not really want to pick them. Yeah, I feel you. Mm -hmm. 